Suppose the program we're trying to write is about keeping track of the number of cookies in the cookie store. The first step of the design recipe, representation, we consider what's important about this problem, and here we only care about the number of cookies, uh, not whether they're a chocolate chip, for example, and so we can represent that just using an integer. And that means if our program is eat cookie, which tells us what happens when you eat one of the cookies in the cookie jar, then that it will take an integer and return an integer. It takes the number of cookies we currently have and returns the number of cookies we have afterwards. The next step is to write examples, which means we will write check forms. Check always starts with check colon, then we have the expression that we are providing as an example, and then is and the result that we expect for that function call. So here our function is eat cookie, um, and then I have parentheses for the arguments. And this is the first step in this uh, examples where we have a choice, right? We had to write check because uh, it's an example. We had to write eat cookie because that's the name of our function. But now we get to pick an integer according to our representation step. Uh, let's just go with the integer 10. So now if we eat one cookie and we had 10, the result should be nine cookies afterwards. We can make some more examples. Uh, we just get to pick different integers. It's a good idea to include anything that might be a boundary case. So here, having no cookies at all, when you try to eat, what happens? Well, examples like this force you to think about that and perhaps make a choice and refine uh, the notion of what program you're trying to write. So, so now we are trying to implement eat cookie with those examples, and we move on to the template step. The template step uses the name of the function, and it considers the the information that you have available just based on the input type. In this case, we're going to write an eat cookie function. The input type is integer, and so the template is actually pretty boring. All we know is we just have some integer n to work with. Right? So this will become a more interesting step later, but again, for now, it's only about the input, and you just write down and remind yourself what input you have. Finally, in the body step, we work case by case by considering each of the different examples. And if we look at the first example, we say that in the case of eat cookie 10, we should get a 9 out. We can see that 10 corresponds to n in this example. And we have n in the body. We want to turn that n to a 9. Of course, we can just subtract 1. So now we have a body that is consistent with this example. And we should check the other examples. Eat cookie 1, uh, that uh, is looking for 0. That one works out. Oh, this last one is not going to work out, though. If we have 0, we would subtract 0 and end up with uh, negative 1 cookies. So by considering all our examples, then we might get to this refinement, where we check whether n is greater than 0. If so, we subtract. Otherwise, we get 0. The last step of the recipe is just to run this test, run the tests, and uh, they will all pass. So we will be done with this function.